Hi everyone, so last week on the 4th of July, United Kingdom Marines stormed and hijacked an oil tanker off the coast of Gibraltar in what Spain classes as international waters that allegedly was full of Iranian oil headed to Syria. And Marines did that. Now these Marines were deployed there a couple of weeks ago according to the Times on the back of this evidence that the United States said proved that Iran were behind the bombing of two Japanese oil tankers a couple of weeks ago in the Strait of Hormuz. Just realized I put the wrong slide up there. Um, yeah, I meant this evidence, of course, but you can see my mistake. Now, it's been widely reported that this was at the request of the United States, whose president and ex-game show host Donald Trump was making a speech on the same day celebrating obviously America's independence that was won in 1776. That's when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Just take a listen to his speech and see how Donald Trump remembers them winning that war against the British in the 18th century. Our army manned the airports, it ran the ramparts, it took over the airports, it did everything it had to do. And at Fort McHenry, under the rocket's red glare, it had nothing but victory. And when dawn came, their star-spangled banner waved defiant. So the guy, our Marines, basically did an act of piracy on behalf of last week. I thought planes were around in the 18th century and were used in the war against the British, where the Americans got their independence. Cool. Not a problem with that at all. Now remember, this is the same Donald Trump that currently it is found our UK ambassador believes he's inept and believes his administration is, quote, uniquely dysfunctional. That's our UK ambassador, that we know that because of leaked emails that have come out in the last few days. That's our ambassador to the United States that is saying those things about him. Yet we're basically doing acts of piracy on his behalf. Hmm. Liam Fox, our Treasury Secretary, isn't really bothered about that though. He wants to know who actually leaked the emails themselves. That's the problem he's focusing on. Do you think he should or do you think he should be focusing on, I don't know, was following a so-called fascist into war against Iran? Now remember this is all at the request of course as well as this guy, John Bolton, or to give him his real name, John Bomb 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 Iran Bolton, who was first to congratulate the British on this act of piracy in this Reuters article. Well loved, John Bolton is over in America. Here's what Bernie Sanders thinks about him. Take a look at this. I think getting out of the deal says to Iran, those happy days are over. I've got to say something. Needless to say, I, I disagree with John <laughs> on a whole lot, but I will give him credit for chutzpah. Is the U.S. going to impose sanctions on European companies that continue to do business with Iran? Uh, I think I did give the answer. Well, you the said answer, we'll see. The answer is it's possible. This is a man who was a key advisor to President Bush, George W. Bush, in urging him to get involved and to invade Iraq because supposedly Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. Because of the deal, Iran was able to take advantage of turmoil in the region to advance its interest all across the Middle East, in Iraq, in Syria. And then Bolton talks about, appropriately so, the increased influence that Iran now has in Iraq. Yeah, that's true. And that's precisely because of the war in Iraq. So I think you have some people, unfortunately, in Washington, Bolton being one of them, who believe that war and militarism is the answer to everything. We have spent over $2 trillion in the wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and yet today our infrastructure here in the United States is crumbling. We have millions of people can't afford to go to college or are leaving college deeply in debt. Maybe, just maybe, we might want to be investing in the American people rather than inflated military budgets and more and more wars. 
With all this happening, you would think, of course, that the liberal media in this country are just going nuts, wouldn't you? You would think they're going nuts about this. I mean, come on, we're doing the bidding of a fascist here. They've been calling him a fascist. He's locking kids up in cages at the border. He's rolling back environmental protections all over. He's pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord. He's accelerating climate change. He's a menace to the planet, the media, the liberal media call him over here. So surely they should, they're going to be outraged about us following this man in an act of piracy and doing his bidding, aren't they? I know. Crickets. It's almost as if they're part of the problem, isn't it? It's almost as if these liberal voices and talking heads on your TV are there to divide you and to keep you arguing amongst themselves. And it's almost as if these people in the media are part of the problem, isn't it? Now, all of this is happening, of course, because America last year pulled out of the JCPOA. Yes, Trump, Bolton, Pompeo, torturer Gina Haspel, who's did you know they've got a torturer as the head of the CIA? Verified torturer. We're following them into the war, doing the bidding of this fascist in acts of piracy. They've got torturers at the head of the CIA. Come on, liberal media, you've got to be screaming about this. No, still crickets. Anyway, all of this is happening following those people pulling out of the JCPOA last year, otherwise known as the Iran nuclear deal. Yes, it was America that pulled out of it and then directly violated it by putting back the sanctions that the JCPOA stopped. Sanctions which of course kill the poorest in that country. There were reports that it's making the Iranian economy scream right now. People die from this kind of warfare. Yes, it's warfare. It's called hybrid warfare. We don't fire missiles anymore when we go to war. We fire sanctions and we fire cyber attacks. They still kill people. We don't bomb dams anymore in acts of heroism that go on to be amazing films that people love years later. No. We just shut the dam down with a cyber attack. People still die. Sanctions still kill. 40,000 Venezuelans have been killed by the sanctions that America and we have, uh, us have put on them in the last few years. How many Iranians, poor Iranians are being killed from these sanctions now? Again, liberal media, can I hear you say anything about these things? And it's all, of course, happening whilst the United Kingdom faces a constitutional crisis over a twice postponed Brexit, which pretty much proves democracy is just a sham and an illusion in this country. Whilst, of course, 160,000 predominantly rich, predominantly white, I would say, predominantly over 55 conservatives choose which of these two men, a blundering buffoon and the Grim Reaper, get to be our next head of state actor. And gets to pretend to be our next head of state actor, rather. I should add pretending, because let's face it, our Prime Minister, our outgoing one, she's been nothing more than a bad actress for the last two years. Look at this. This is an embarrassment. It's also happening a few weeks after Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State to game show host and what the liberal media call fascist Donald Trump, was telling some rich Israelis that America would preemptively intervene to stop a Jeremy Corbyn government in this country, basically saying that they will do the exact same thing that they have been saying that Russia have done to them for the last three years. But this, the Americans are saying they'll do it to us. 
and we're doing their bidding in acts of piracy? Liberal media, you've got to be screaming about this, surely. This, of course, is in the same week, I think, as the UK civil service, who have to be neutral. They've got to be Switzerland. Come out and break from that and say that Jeremy Corbyn is too frail to be prime minister. And just a year after the British army were using this image for target practice. And all while our political parties and institutions are essentially neutralised and have been for some while. They can't get a damn thing done in the Houses of Parliament. They can't. But while that's a mess, the war machine, that just moves on squeaky clean. The same war machine, remember, that caused the massive problems with Iran in the first place. What we are doing right now is siege warfare. This is what started it all off in 1953 with Operation Ajax. And if you think the CIA aren't trying to get people riled up in Iran to overthrow this leader so they can have their precious oil in Iran sold on the petrodollar and carry on with their capitalist gangbang, then you're sadly mistaken because they've got Gina Haspel, a verified torturer, at the head of that thing. This is Operation Ajax 2.0. And the media are lying to you by trying to pull the wool over your eyes and make out that it's anything other than it is. It's an attempted coup. And all the time they're saying that Russia have hacked our elections and Russia have got these army of bots spreading disinformation among you and they're doing it themselves, not on Russians, but on us, lying to us through the 77th Brigade, to us. Now I don't know what you can call this and whatever you think has happened here, the two things that jump out to me, first of all, it's offensive and it makes me angry. But secondly, and most importantly, it's undemocratic. I'm betting, you know, I'm betting that more Labour voters voted in the last couple of weeks to deselect their Blairite MP than people who got to vote who our next head of state actor is. How's that for democracy, Maduro? Hmm? Take that, Assad. Now, I don't know what it's going to take to fix this. Not exactly. But I do know this. If we continue to blame each other for the problems that these people have created, these same people who are lying to you right now and doing these acts of piracy on behalf of what they are calling a fascist, those people are the people who are making your lives more difficult. It's them. It's not the left or the right. Brexiteers didn't burn down Grenfell Tower and then two years later still have 40,000 people living in apartment blocks cladded with that fire hazard, that death trap. 40,000 people two years later are still in conditions like that. Do you think this act of piracy, do you think the cost of this act of piracy that we did on behalf of Donald Trump just last week, do you think that that would have paid for those 40,000 people to be rehomed and for those houses to be made safe, those apartment blocks to be made safe? Do, you bet your ass I, it did. That operation cost millions. Remainers didn't create the policy of the hostile environment that persecuted the Windrush generation in this country. Something that, you know what, in a hundred years time, history books are going to look back and with absolute disdain on those who implemented that racist, racist policy. But it 
wasn't Remainers or Brexiteers that did that. It wasn't immigrants that decided to bomb Syria last year based on what looks like it was a false flag attack and then forced the OPCW to silence any evidence that went against their narrative. And there is a lot. It wasn't immigrants that did that. And it wasn't Russians that have forced our welfare state into a situation that led to the United Nations Rapporteur on Poverty likening it to the creation of workhouses. It wasn't Russians that did that. We cannot continue to blame each other for the state of our decaying democracy and political parties which threw the working class overboard decades ago and continues to cheat us on a daily basis and lie to us systematically through their lying media which only serves to divide us and keep the focus off those who are screwing us all over who are shamelessly right now, this, this media are shamelessly right now, at the same time, smearing and slandering Jeremy Corbyn and Chris Williamson, two of the most anti-racist people, as racist anti-Semites. The same line media that for seven years has associated Julian Assange with headlines of being a rapist, instead of being an award-winning, seven times nominated Nobel Peace Prize journalist who showed war criminals were war criminals. That's what they should be doing, but no. Julian Assange, rapist, smear, slander, all this trick in the book. The very person who could be exposing all the very person who could be exposing all of the, the, the lies that have been told about Syria, about the Skripals, about Grenfell, about Windrush. Convenient, isn't it, that he's been silent? It is going to take a mass movement of the working class to correct these horrific injustices. We're not going to vote our way out of this. We're all going to have to get active if we are going to defeat these complete psychopaths who are ruining your lives and destroying your children's futures. I am ready for that mass movement. Are you? Or am I going to hear more of this?